Is breast always best? With so many mums being told it is, what happens when something so natural doesn't come naturally to you? Hello, I'm Vicky Letch and on today's programme we ask the question, is a breast always best? With new mums under so much pressure to do the right thing for their baby, it would seem that everyone has an opinion on how and where they should be feeding their infants. And what if the most natural act in the world doesn't actually come so naturally to you? Well, if breastfeeding is causing you anxiety at an already overwhelming time in your life, you've come to the right place. As we're joined by NHS breastfeeding advisor, Amber Taylor, uh, we'll also be hearing from Karen Reiki and Claire Levitt, who in the past have had their fair share of challenges with feeding their babies. Of course, we're live today, so if you have any questions for Amber, Karen or Claire, please use the box on your screen and we'll do our best to tackle them over the course of the next 15 minutes or so. And if you're tweeting whilst watching the show, just use the hashtag StudioTalkTV and we'll certainly try and give you a mention. So, is breast really best? Well. Amber Taylor, I'm going to start with you. So you're an NHS breastfeeding advisor. You will meet then a plethora of new mums in all sorts of different environments, cultures, backgrounds, mm -hmm. situations. Is it always the case that it's boob over bottle? Well, it's an interesting one to start with because uh, most people who are in the um, specialists in the breastfeeding world would rather say that breast is a biological norm than yeah. that it's best. Um, at the end of the day, that is what, as human beings, we are designed to do. It is natural, although, as I'm sure we'll go on to talk about, it doesn't always come naturally. Um, and we need to focus on why there are a lot of um, benefits to doing it, why it's helpful for mums. In instances where parental choice or problems prohibit a mum from breastfeeding, then there are other options available. And I think parents just need to be fully informed so that they're able to make decisions that are right for them. You know, people always sort of say everyone can sing, they just need the right singing teacher. Is that the case with breastfeeding? Or are, are there, at times, extreme cases where actually the woman can't physically breastfeed? There are cases like that. 98% um, of women can breastfeed physically with the right support, but the end of that sentence is the really key part with yeah. the right support. Unfortunately, what seems to be the case is that women um, are often infrequently given the wrong advice, sent in the wrong direction, told that what's actually really a relatively small problem which could be quite easily overcome, it has to be the end of their mm. breastfeeding. Um, again, it's about information. And I think, you know, it is, it is natural. As I always say, it's the same as walking, you know, Breast, breastfeeding is a natural act, but that doesn't mean that in the first instance it always goes according to plan. The same as when your baby takes their first step, they don't immediately start running marathons, there'll be a lot of falling over and having somebody there who can give you the information that you need at that time is vital. Yeah, it's getting the right help and yeah. the right guidance. And I don't know, is it a common factor? Because myself and a lot of my mummy friends, we instantly thought, well, we just can't do this. It's not happening overnight. It's just not happening straight away. And then, then once you get going with it, I always worried that I wasn't producing enough milk to sustain my daughter. Is that quite common for women to think that? Very common. Um, it's not only, it's a myth which is perpetuated by the stories that we tell each other. So if a, a mother's had a problem, which she may have been given incorrect advice about, mm. then obviously she'll then tell her friends and family, this is why I couldn't breastfeed. They then go into having their baby thinking that that's a perfectly yeah. normal thing to happen. But like I said, the thing to keep coming back to is that 98% of women can breastfeed with the right support. So it's, although there are people who can't, breast reduction would be one of the bigger examples, mm. and that's not always a problem, but it can um, prevent mums from breastfeeding. Um, at the end of the day, it's pretty unlikely you're going to be in that 2%. Yeah. So knowing where to turn is the, is the best thing. And it's a big job for you, getting yeah. everyone on the same hymn sheet here, because yes. I'm, I imagine, <laughs> and, and you and I have had a little yeah. chat prior to going live today, that the advice you give isn't necessarily the advice we get as our aftercare in hospital. No. can be quite... Unfortunately, yeah, it's pretty in it can be quite inconsistent. And I mean, in the first instance, for parents who have their babies in hospital, you've got shift changes to consider. Mm. So you might be getting some very good support, and then that person goes home, and then someone's telling you something different, which can be really hard. Um, 
even further on, you know, when you've got health visitors and things like that, not everybody's got the same level of knowledge. So I would really stress that it's important to know who the breastfeeding specialists are, lactation consultants and breastfeeding support um, workers and things like that, and also to get second opinions, you know, like mm. with anything else in medicine, if somebody tells you something and it's not really consistent with what your plan was, then find out if there's somebody else who can you know also talk to you about it and it might be that they give you a different story it's also really really important to find out where the breastfeeding support is while you're pregnant and I can't stress that enough mm. there are support groups in most areas go to them when you're you know off work in those last few weeks meet the people who are there find out where you'll return to basically yeah and that will make it much easier when you've got everything else yeah going bonkers in those first few days of being a new parent yeah because it is quite an overwhelming <laughs> time uh, Karen and Claire I am going to get to you we want to hear all about your own experiences of feeding um, before I do that I'm going to take the first live question because we are live today and I've got a feeling this is going to be a busy one um, so let's start with Sarah Sarah says I'm almost nine months pregnant and I'm confused about breastfeeding how will I know that my baby is getting all that it needs from my breast milk my mother-in-law breastfed all her children but my mother didn't and I'm really confused okay um, the fact that she's got some influence there culturally of somebody who mm -hmm. did breastfeed very successfully will be really useful to her because having the support of family and the understanding is is really um, useful at the beginning um, with regard to the fact that her mum didn't, that might be something that might be useful for her mum perhaps to attend a support group with her so that she yes. can hear things as well so that then she, because we all probably know about getting advice in inverted commas yes. from family and friends and you know not everybody's an expert so obviously that will be new to her mum so she'll want to know. Um, to actually answer the question itself, the, way, the best way to know that your baby is getting what they need whether it's when they're newborn or six months old, the first things would be to look at what goes out, comes out rather than what goes in because we're very much culturally used to sort of the idea of looking at um, a quantity of milk in a bottle and that feels difficult for mums who obviously don't have sort of markings on their breasts of how much is coming out. <laughs> um, so Seven ounces, that would be clear. Yeah, exactly, and there's it draining away. Um, in the first instance, looking at wet and dirty nappies, a baby, yes. a newborn baby should be having about at least six to eight wet nappies um, a day, not in the first two days, that's slightly different, yeah. um, but from then on, um, and that they're going for dirty nappies fairly regularly, that decreases as they get bigger as well, mm. um, that they're generally satisfied after a feed, that they're feeding at least eight times in 24 hours in the first few weeks. Mm. Um, that may not be equally spaced out, you might sometimes have two feeds in an hour and then four hours without, but looking at the whole 24 hours. And all of these things are part of a breastfeeding assessment which um, hopefully somebody should go through with you soon after baby's born. And if not by your midwife or health visitor, then if you attend a group, you can be reassured on all of these points. So again, I'm going to keep banging the same drum, but yeah. go to groups and ask yes. somebody who knows yeah. who can reassure you. Yeah, Sarah, I hope that's helped and good luck. It's an exciting time. Overwhelming as we keep saying, but very exciting. What sort of struggles would you say are typical for a new mum that they'd be facing when it comes to breastfeeding? Um, that one from that question there is very typical, worrying about whether you've got enough milk. Um, I think the sheer sort of shock to the system and to your life of having a newborn means that you are very tired, very mm. overwhelmed. Mm. It's normal to be very hormonal up and down. You know, we're not talking about postnatal depression here, which is something different, mm. but it is, you know, lots of new mums will feel elated and then be in tears yeah. and you know having that the support around you and telling people if you want to breastfeed that that's what you want to do so that your support mm. team are also there for you in those moments where you do feel like this is too much having your partner be able to say right go and have a bath let me take baby for a little while you know one feed at a time those kind of things um, can help a lot there are other physical things that come up quite a lot. Tongue ties is something that's quite hot at the moment. Yes. Um, it's relatively easily treated if it does cause a breastfeeding problem, but tongue ties in themselves don't have to cause a breastfeeding mm -hmm. problem. Again, that's a bit of misinformation. I have a lot of mums who I see who've been told their baby's tongue tied and they will need to have it treated and that's yeah. not always the case a lot can be done with different positioning and things like that again with the help of a breastfeeding yes. expert yeah. a group or something um they're probably the two most common and you know other people's attitudes yeah and things like that people have to contend with and yeah. decide how they're going to progress we're going to talk about that in more detail i think that feeding in public and and how mm. people perceive that a little bit later on but i want to come to you mums now first hand experience um actually let's start with you karen tell us a little bit about your your background and story when it comes to feeding um my first baby my daughter she's now eight 
Uh, she was born about two and a half weeks early. I had high blood pressure, so I was in hospital being treated and she decided to make her entrance. Um, I ended up having surgery after she was born and she and I were both very sleepy. I was on a lot of medication and she was very sleepy because she was a little bit early and she didn't want to suck properly and she mm -hmm. didn't want to latch and she just didn't want to feed. Um, so I went home and did have some help but was basically told I wasn't making enough milk, I had to pump. They, I did end up supplementing her with a little bit of formula just because she would just scream. Um, and it turned out that actually I was making too much milk and she had reflux. But it took three months wow. and two hospitalizations with mastitis and cracked nipples and thrush and more, you know, mm -hmm. reading and phoning people and tears and trauma and should I just put her on a bottle and be done mm -hmm. with it. Um, I think by three or four months we'd figured it out. And then I went back to work and had to sort of pump and express and try and feed her bottles and stuff. So it was very, very challenging. It was a very difficult time when you look at the, you know, you read the books and you watch the movies and it's all lovely and soft and nice yeah. and the baby just does it. And actually, in reality, the baby sometimes doesn't and you don't know what you're doing. You know, it's not, it's, you don't get any you know you don't kind of know until you're actually doing mm. breastfeeding whether it's going to work or not it's it's a lot of guesswork and working out what works but for you and your baby and you did stick with it and I, I almost find that amazing in the sense that I would never judge any woman in that situation who turned around and said do you know what I can't do this because you have to balance up quality of life and how you want to feed your child but the fact that you did persevere and struggle through it how, how did you then view breastfeeding once you once you were into a rhythm and she was feeding nicely. Did you have a positive? It was positive. It, it took me a long time to accept that it was okay. Mm. And I, when she started teething, I'd be like, "Oh, hang on a minute. Are we now hitting another? You know, mild, You know, mm. is this going to be the? Is this going to be the end of it?" They go through phases where they just don't want to feed. The things that you know, life's more interesting, and you're like, "Oh, is she getting enough?" And then you go and you get the weighed and and all sorts of stuff. So it was. I enjoyed it, but there was still this in the back of my mind: Is this going to work? Is this going to carry on working? Am I going to have to stop? And then with my son, I was terrified because I had been through all of that. And it was, you know, and I actually did say to my husband, you know what, if if we have to, we'll do bottles. I'm not going through that again. And fortunately, he seemed to know what to do. He was a textbook baby and he seemed to know what to do. But I was prepared for the worst to happen again because mm. it was like, you just don't know, you know. And I've had friends who've had first baby was good, second baby was bad. You know, it, it. You know, it just. It, it's. You just don't know. So I did really enjoy it, and I'm really glad I did it. But Good. it was very a, a real emotional roller coaster mm. of you know trying to. I think it's Keep immensely it emotional and, uh, and breastfeeding hormones, well you'll know more about that than I do, but I think they were more powerful in me than my pregnancy hormones. Mm. It's something quite animalistic that takes takes over I think when you, when you are feeding your baby and that brings me back to the feeding in public. I think I was so, so worried about feeding public and that must be a huge mm. factor. You must meet so many women that yes. are nervous about that. Absolutely. Um, it's one of the things that, I, you know, people feel that they're going to be judged, that they're going to be told off you. Again, like I was saying before about the sort of myths that get perpetuated, you're bound to hear some stories of somebody who's been given a hard time about breastfeeding in public and therefore that um, adds to your concern yes. about what's going to happen. Um, I would say take it one step at a time. Don't rush into how you feel about anything in the first few weeks because breastfeeding a newborn is very different than breastfeeding a three week old or a three month old or you know depending how long you go on. And I think it is a lot on your plate when you've just had the baby and as you've just said, you know, the hormones are all over the place. It might be in the first few days, even with a almost textbook baby, that they still have you know, some little mm. foibles in the way that they latch. And if you put yourself into a situation in those first few days where you're you know, out exposed in public and you're already nervous anyway, it's gonna be a lot harder. Um, so believe that it will be better. Um, uh, would you like me to go into now some sort of tips or are we gonna yeah, do Yeah, why not? Okay. We, we'll have some tips, yeah, that'd okay. be good. Um, so what I've done today, first of all, is I've worn some clothing to show a lot of mums, and we were talking about this earlier, regardless of the um, fear of exposing um, your breasts at all when you're feeding, quite often when the baby's goat latches on well, you'll find actually you can't really see very much because the head's in the way. Mm. But a lot of new mums are a bit anxious about their muffin top and their <laughs> stretch marks and all the other things yes. that we're, the aftermath we're left with. So um, one of the things we recommend is wearing a double top. So if you're wearing like a vest top like I am here, uh, underneath and then a baggy top what you can do is lift this one up 
and lift the that one down. I'm just exposing my bra to you, but that would be my breast. <laughs> and then you see you're only really exposing a little eye shape. Your whole side's covered, and when yeah. the baby's latched on, you can just relax like that. Um, also, a scarf like I've got on here can be quite useful. Just again, you can latch the baby on, and you're covering up the sides. A loose cardigan can do the same thing. Um, there are nursing covers available, and some mums um, in, really like those. What I would say is be aware that babies usually know that they're under a tent. <laughs> And sometimes it can be a little bit more um, of a hassle actually having a baby that's already kind of crying maybe because they're not making eye contact with you and then they're kind of trying to push the tent yeah. off and wondering what's going on. For some parents they work well but I would suggest that it's probably worth trying the other kind of options first. Um, and also it's a really big place where dads or partners can be helpful. We talk a lot about breastfeeding and focusing it on the mum and dads sometimes can feel a bit redundant mm. um, but actually being the protector, the person who's there ready to you know stand up for you in a situation should it arrive, even taking you to find a comfy chair in a restaurant, you know, positioning cushions for you, all that kind of thing, is a really important role. Um, so I'd also say if you are going to go and feed out and about, to begin yeah. with, take, you know, take friends and family so that you've got a little support network. And again, the groups are a really useful place because you're surrounded by other mums who are doing exactly and the same it. thing, yeah. who are either further along than you and can reassure you and tell you some of their tips, or who are in the same situation and at least you've got that, you know, mm -hmm. company then that actually we're all nervous about this or, okay, at least in, on the first instance I'm just doing this in front of other women who are in exactly the same situation. Yeah. And then you build your confidence. Yeah. Question here from Ian, actually. He says, I'm a dad. My daughter is 12 weeks old and I feel I should be doing more, but as my wife is breastfeeding I don't know what I could do any advice would be helpful okay so what we've just covered there yeah. that was timely um, another big thing is you taking any of the other childcare roles that aren't mm -hmm. feeding feeding is one part of having a baby there's a lot of other bonding for a start dads just as well as mums can do the skin to skin cuddles which is really really beneficial um, you can do that as often as you want I had one mum at group whose husband chose from birth that he would do baths and actually that mum got to a situation where dad was out um, when baby was about three months old and she had to do the bath and she was genuinely a bit like oh, oh I, don't I don't know what, what to, do. to do here I've never bathed my own baby because that was his role and mm. she did the the feeds so I think finding something else yeah. which can be your thing and as I say in terms of supporting the breastfeeding sometimes Mums just need somebody to bring them a drink, to bring them food, to tell them that they're doing a really good job. Even when things are hard, telling them that, you know, they're really proud of everything yes, they are yeah. doing. Um, and also, even before baby comes, knowing what mum's plan is, what she would like to achieve, and then helping mm. her to achieve that. Be the person who phones up and finds out where the support group is. Be the person who drives her there. Those kind of yeah. those kind of things. There's a lot more to it. Dads don't have to sit feeling redundant just because mum's doing the feeding task. Absolutely, and, and particularly in the first days where you're a bit fumbly and getting used to things, just bringing a drink is mm. the best thing you can do. You get so thirsty when you're breastfeeding. Actually, just preempting that and having a drink, you feel like you're being looked after. Let's come to you now, Claire, and hear a bit about your experience with feeding. Okay. Um, so I had my daughter, who's now four. Um, and no one had sort of told me that it could ever go wrong. They just sort of made it seem really easy and really like easygoing and um, simple. And then when I had her, she was born with um, a problem with her jaw, so she couldn't latch on. And so lots of people came in the room and out of the room and everyone had a different opinion, had a different suggestion, nothing worked. And it got to sort of about 14, 16 hours where she hadn't fed at all after she was born and it all just sort of went downhill from there really and so I mean that would be really a very emotional thing for a new mum to go through your instinct is to care for this yeah. little bundle in that case Amber you can't physically feed your baby I think that's when it gets quite stressful for us new mums so what would your advice had been in that in that instance it is really difficult and you know it sometimes as we said there are the cases where you physically are unable to feed your baby for one reason or another there are still lots of options in that situation and it's important that mum's informed so that she and dad can make the choices that are right for given that situation mm. in the first instance i wanted to pick up on something you said not with the example of what actually your baby had with her mm -hmm. jaw um, but babies aren't born hungry and actually a lot of the mums that i see have been given poor information in the first few hours following a medicalized birth or you know even a natural part of baby's recovery after a normal birth would be that they have one feed and then sleep for quite a long period um, just that first day 
so it's important to know that actually it's worth still going mm. back to the breast and, and trying again. Um, in the instance that you've had, I would say whatever um, you've been told that as a reason your baby can't breastfeed, get a second opinion, which I've already said, um, because it might be that somebody else, although, although that's challenging, has seen it before and has got a suggestion about a different way to do things. If absolutely a mum um, is, can't breastfeed and has had that information given to her by several different people it's then her choice how she progresses again some mums might feel that they still want to express milk and carry on doing that it's a really really hard um, task kind of if you're not only putting the baby to the breast it's a lot of work but for some mums that's right for them for others then they might want to make other choices about perhaps bottle feeding. Um, it's just always about making sure that you're armed with lots of information. And I would say, although that you have to be careful, there's a lot of information online, but it can be useful looking. Um, mm. There are some better information sources online. Um, LLHA League is one I would like to name that are very, a really useful charitable organisation that if their, if their information sort of supports what you're being told, then you're probably being told right. So nowadays with smartphones, whether you're in hospital or at home, you can still, you know, have a little look and get some support for yeah. the direction you want to yeah. go in whilst you're, whilst you're there. So, yeah. But yeah, it's a, a real challenge. Mm. It, was, it was tough. And as you say, with the new baby hormones as well. Mm. Yeah. It's difficult. Um, Denise, we're going to take your question now. Denise says, my baby is 15 weeks old, congratulations, and I'm still breastfeeding, but since two weeks old she cries for hours, typical of colic, but I have tried cutting things out of my diet, tried over-the-counter products, massage, uh, osteopathy has helped a little, but she continues to cry still for up to four hours four hours a day, but I feel it's more bowel related. Wind, is there anything else you could advise, advise as people keep criticizing me saying to change to formula? Um, without going into a whole, I mean, if, if um, I was seeing this lady face to face, yeah. this would probably be like a one hour session where we yeah. talk through it. There are lots of different things that could be related to, so I don't want to necessarily pick on one when I could be missing something yeah. else whilst we're here. Um, at the end of the day, it's how what mum feels about how she wants to proceed. If people mm. are telling her to use formula and she doesn't want to, even if her baby's crying, if that's something that she's okay with, colic mm. is something which happens and there isn't always an answer for. So it may be that she just carries on doing mm. what she's doing. I would certainly recommend trying a good sling because some babies who are colicky, even though they may still cry, having the upright position and being close to mum can offer them some comfort. Um, and other than that, you know, bowel related and things like that, something that you'd need to have a bit more specialist mm. advice on. So I would say um, find out if you've got a local breastfeeding support group, let them talk through the sort of first layer of potential mm. issues with you. And if that doesn't resolve things or give you some options of things to try, then it would be something to go to your GP with. Yeah. Uh, the colic thing's hard. My daughter was colicky and when they cry for that amount of time it is distressing mm. it gets better it does yeah. get better so hang in there mummy you're doing a wonderful job uh, this is from diana she says can you tell me what the best age to stop breastfeeding is i have an 11 month old son who i am still breastfeeding the best age to stop breastfeeding is when you and your son feel that it's right for you yeah. um, the world health organization recommends two years of breastfeeding the world wide average is four years which always puts people's jaws on the floor um, it is a little. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's it's basically what suits both of you. You both yeah. carry on as long as you're happy to do so. There's a lot of um, benefit to it as when you're feeding a slightly older baby anyway. And there is still a lot of nutritional value despite what people get told. So. Yeah. How long did you end up breastfeeding for? 18 months and 27 months. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's... Yeah. So, yeah. I'll shake Not your hand. Full. I'll shake <laughs> your hand. A good later. example of carrying on as long as they're mm. both happy. So. Yeah. And did you end up going to bottle, presumably? Um, with my first, yeah, with yeah. my daughter. Yeah, we just, um, yeah, we just went straight on the bottle yeah. in the end because we just, we didn't know what to do and n like neither of my parents or his parents really had any experience. We didn't have yeah. anyone close that had any babies. We were the first in, you know, of his brother and my sister to have had babies. So it was all, no one really knew what we were doing and we just sort of was like, just panicked basically. How did you find people reacting to that decision? Were they supportive and...? Um, the staff at the hospital weren't. Yeah. Um, they were really, really against it. And so they, it's like they just can't say it, basically. They just can't say that word. Um, yeah. But everyone was just like, oh, it's for the best. You know, it was, it, family and friends were just like, just do whatever makes you happy. Um, and because I didn't really know anyone, I just moved to Sussex from London. 
Um, so I went online to sort of talk to people on the forums and stuff and I didn't realise people could get quite so militant about it. Yeah. People get really angry. Um, and people say things online upsetting. that they wouldn't say in real life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. okay, there are always some people yeah. who say things, but that's a, that's a um, proven, a researched fact. Yeah. Mm. People feel they can speak very freely online. So, yeah, yeah forums can Ended be up coming really, off really after really like two months. Nasty. I just couldn't have Absolutely. it anymore. It was awful. Um, but yeah, so. I do think part of that experience and talking to other women, I think one of the things that I was very lucky and in my group of mummy friends, we're all very supportive of each other and we're all very different parents actually, but we support each other doing the right thing for them. I do you sometimes feel that other women aren't very supportive and, and particularly in this whole arena of breastfeeding and going to bottle instead, women should just, we should support each other more and just know that we're all parents doing what we think is right for our, yeah. for our child. So your second child, were you able to yeah, breastfeed? Yeah, he, he uh, is like, just like the perfect baby. He yeah. just sort of <laughs> did it straight away and has never Fantastic. had any issues, you know. I've had some issues and yeah. um, the hardest part was because he was my second, people just assumed that I knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so nobody sort of, you know, yeah. popped by to say, are you okay, do you need any help? And so luckily I've got a, fr a really good friend who's yeah. breastfed too. And so I had to keep asking her, which isn't really her job, but I'm sure she was very happy. She was. To help she you. was. Yeah. She, so, um, yeah. So, was that a relief? Were you nervous um, about breastfeeding because of your experiences before? When I was pregnant, I bought sort of a steriliser and bought loads of bottles yeah. because I was just convinced it was going to go wrong. You know, I was just like, I wanted to try it, but I thought yeah. if the first the first mistake and that's it, I just go straight onto bottle and I just feel really bad about it now. But. But luckily, he was really good. So. Yay! Clever boy. Mm. Uh, we've got a question here from Gemma. Thanks, Gemma. She says, my baby is seven months old and I'm due to go back to work in a couple of weeks' time. What routine should I get my baby into and should I try to wean him so it'll help him when he goes to nursery and I go back to work? Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously, it depends exactly what your working schedule is going to be because there'll be a very big difference between being part time or full time or shift work or anything like that. So, you need to um, formulate a plan. Again, this would be something that a breastfeeding mm -hmm. group would be really useful for um, to see what works for Gemma's situation, for the hours she's going to be working. It's a little bit of an assumption that you need to, that you need to pump. But after six months, when babies are having solids and water as well, we, I've experienced lots of mums at groups who, although they've done all of this, expressing baby's not that fussed about taking the bottles when mum's not there and actually babies can fit their breastfeeds around the time mum is there oh, and that's really? very normal um, yeah. So, yeah so a lot of a lot of the time I'm that's although we try and make a plan with mums mums would usually like to have you know everything prepared yeah often they find that soon enough they've stopped and, and your body adjusts as well um, to being able to produce the milk when you are there so that it might be in the first few days it would be worth taking a pump to work so that if you're getting too full that you can make yourself comfortable um, but again that regulates quite quickly it's important as well to know that you are protected um, by law that when you return to work that you're um, employers need to consider the fact that you're breastfeeding and offer you somewhere to express and to store your milk that conversation if you want to have it will go a lot better if you um, mm -hmm. tackle it before you arrive on the day <laughs> so it'd be well worth sending an email or something like that um, and saying this is what's what I'm going to be doing and how can we plan for that um, I, I would avoid uh, getting any babies into routines to be honest because mm -hmm. they're not really we're not as a as a species creatures of, of routine yeah. but I'm sure that wherever the baby's going to be cared for during the day mum will probably start doing some taster sessions there and see how those go mm. um, and again, things further down the line, like whether baby will take a bottle or not, would be things to speak to other mums who've been in the same situation at, at some support groups yeah. and see see what works for Gemma and her baby. And yeah. good luck going back to work. That's quite an yes. emotional time anyway, but you know, back to the back to the normal pre-baby life. Back into yeah. Hold on, who was I before? <laughs> I remember putting makeup on, going to work, thinking, how did I used to do this with mascara everywhere? I just looked terrible. Um, I just want to ask if, Karen, people watching now, what advice would you have? What would be, let's say, your top tip for a mum who's breastfeeding for the first time and perhaps isn't finding it so straightforward? Get help as soon as possible. Yeah. Don't, and sometimes the internet can be really good, but you know, sometimes it can be a, a real minefield of misinformation or judgment. Get help, um, uh, speak to either if you have got a midwife or a health visitor, or if you can see someone amazingly qualified who knows what they're doing um, and who can come and look at what you're doing, talk you through your problems.
problems and not just once. I, I saw someone privately three times and then she followed me up for sort of three months afterwards. But, you know, even if you think you're being really, really silly and you're like, it hurts and people say oh, it should hurt, but actually there's there's learning how to feed and, you know, because it's quite sensitive and mm. then there's actually, you know, this is really painful and it shouldn't be. So if you can, get help as soon as possible and, you know, just don't be embarrassed to ask questions and mm. to keep saying you know I don't I'm not sure what I'm doing because you're feeding your baby you know it's not like you're you know learning to ride a bike that you know you can just practice and practice yeah you have to be able to feed your baby otherwise yeah. you know you, it's not going to work so yeah definitely get help as soon as possible and also whilst you're still pregnant I didn't the first time around really think about getting any advice I just thought I'd be able to do it mm. but actually whilst you're still pregnant find out who your local um, breastfeeding support are um, if there's one in your hospital, if there's local clinics, find some local groups so that when you come home with the baby, you actually can go, oh, actually, I've got that written down. I can just give them a call rather than three days hormones and, you know, you're screaming at your husband, help me, when you've actually got that information already to hand so that you're not stressing yeah. yourself out and you can just access it very easily, I think is, yeah, that would be my advice. Great advice. How about you, Claire? Yeah, I can't stress enough how important it is when you're pregnant or do a baby to, to do your research and because the NHS aren't going to give you that information they're not going to say that you can do combination feeding you can exclusively pump you know there's lots of different things you don't have to just breastfeed if you encounter problems and so I can't stress enough how much research before you give mm. birth mm -hmm. is really important and just talking to other mums that have done it and yeah just real life experience is really just really important and I think if there is a number two, I'm going to take your advice about one feed at a time. I really like that because I think I was making the mistake of looking ahead too much. Mm. And certainly my first day in recovery, I remember them putting my daughter on me this way in the rugby hold over my shoulder. It was just too much. I just couldn't cope with all of these different positions. And I thought, I just need to learn how to get that mouth to actually stay in the place, let alone holding her under my arm and all the rest mm. of it. So I'm going to take that forward for the next one, if there is a next one. I hope there is. <laughs> I will. How about you? Just to, just to sum it all up for the, mums watching. The information that Karen and Claire have given is really, really useful. Um, being prepared when you're pregnant, know that know that 98% of women can breastfeed with the right support, so find out where that support is. Um, question anything that goes against what your instincts are or what feels right for you, um, and enjoy it. Yes. Yeah, we're supposed to enjoy these little wonderful creatures, exactly. Thank you so much. It's been really very, very interesting. And dads, remember, you do have a role to play. You can at least make the, the tea, slice of cake, all the rest of it. Is it true that we can eat more? 500 calories a day it uses to breastfeed, so yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, but we are out of time. Of course, if you want to get any more information and advice about breastfeeding, then go to benedon.co.uk forward slash family health. See you next time. Bye-bye.